There's a lot in there. My There's a gosh. lot in there. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. in there. And as many things you can do with that, and I and I think that uh, today gives you know, offers me an opportunity to show a lot of people about it, which is very nice that you would ask me all these things. But I would say just I'll do that a little bit of that one more time, and then we'll stop. But I'll, I'll show you how there's a moving bass line too. If you go, uh... And you're using harmonies, melodies, uh, we're using false harmonics, true harmonics, and the moving bass line. So you can do a lot with it. Sure, you know? sure. Just a little insight on how it works. Tell me a little bit about the harmonics. You okay. said false and true. So Right. Well, here's, here's true. Every guitar player has those on his guitar. Okay, that's at the 12th, 7th, right, and right. That's So that's just uh, giving you an idea. And you're barely touching the Very strings. Very barely touching. Okay. Harmonics in themselves were, were always known, but actually Django Reinhardt really started experimenting with them very early on in the uh, early 30s. And he really did some songs just playing with harmonics, which people didn't realize what he was actually doing. And so you became uh, a, another harmonic way to play was not just open strings, but if you took that same theme of that same song and we go to the exact octave up here, there's the harmonic right there. Okay. So you're going to... So now you have to think almost uh, in, in two, two sections exactly, here. Exactly two, right. Right, right. Exactly. So what you're doing is that you're saying, okay, this is where I'm playing, but this is the octave. And if I just mute that note by taking that thumb and hit, hitting the top of the string with my first finger and the pick behind it, you can get... I almost got, I almost got it. So that's the way it comes out. So there are false harmonics too, which that's kind of a false harmonic, but by doing things like we did on the second measure of the song, we can actually hit a harmonic and then pull a string at the same time. So we're getting... So you're getting... So you're actually scraping strings and hitting harmonics at the same time. And you can get tremendous effects. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's a beautiful intro. All comes from the classical technique also. So you you took a song like and you all know this song. And you remember this. <laughs> so that's yeah. basically how this all comes together, and you slowly bring it uh, uh, with the bass line. And really, I think you asked me a little question of how the mechanics of this works, and it really started with just the, the thumb. And I just took a C chord, C seventh chord, and I started playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we get an effect.
trick was to move the chords at the same time. <laughs> so on, up and down the fingerboard. I practiced that for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Before and, anything else? <laughs> well, actually, I was trying to play other songs, but it, it really had, it took a, a coordination aspect. So then I realized that if you took uh, songs like uh, uh, Someday Sweetheart, that you're going to play even differently. You're going to play uh, you're going to play a Make it look easy. Well, <laughs> it's um, it's it's a the other trick is to make it look comfortable to play too, and that's very hard yeah, to do. Yeah. But it is a, it is a difficult way to play, and, and uh, I'm lucky to have started it very young. Sure. And uh, but I had no nobody to really teach me. That was the hard part. But people like Les Paul, who I've worked with for over oh, I guess about forty something years now. Now you say worked with. So <coughs> yes, I'm his sound engineer at the Iridium every Monday night. As a matter of fact, we're from here we're going there. Okay, Iridium's in uh, New in York. New York City, right? Okay. And every Monday, the Les Paul show is kind of a, uh, a, almost a staple of the industry on, on Broadway there. Sure. And so I'm very happy to work with Les still all these years and uh, I've been kind of befriended by him early on, and he used to come and see me play with my sister, who and I, we used to do a Les Paul and Mary Ford act. And uh, we just had a, a great time in the early 60s doing that. And uh, generally speaking, Les would come and see us play, unbeknownst to me the first time, but uh, when he came to see us play, we'd be doing something, and I'd just go, wow, I can't believe that he's here. And that's how I became a very good friend of his. And he kind of took me under his wing and, and taught me a lot. Um, uh, and just what rubs off is wonderful too, you know. Mm -hmm. Need I tell you, uh, it's important. You know? Sure, a lot right? to learn there. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a funny thing. Many of the younger guitar players right. today know about the Les Paul guitar. Right. They don't know that's an actual person right. behind that. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. I think that's the hard part for me to understand because uh, I'm getting on in, in my age a little bit too, and I'm going, wow, they don't know who this is. But you don't realize generations go by and by and by. I know we had an earlier discussion about music today. And uh, I think that uh, it's a shame because people like yourself are making us realize where this music comes from. And that's what's wonderful. And that's why I enjoyed coming down here to do the show. Thanks. Uh, to give some of that, 